Not light. Got that. One moment, one moment, one moment. All right, now please remember to make sure to keep your uh, mics muted. Um, and uh, unless you want to ask a question and then turn it right off. All right, let's get started in today's fun and exciting adventure. Today, we're going to learn all 206 bones in the human body. So prepare to draw pictures, and I think it's going to be fun. Um, for people who don't think they can remember all 206 bones, I say that's wrong. You can and you will because it's easy. So everything is fairly simple. I'll give you an example as to. I'll give you an example of what you need to do. All right. Remember to make life easier. Um, and how do I make your life easier? So 206 bones. That's a lot of bones to remember. But just remember one thing. If you divide the body in half, whatever is on the right side is on the left side. So in reality, it's no longer 206. It's more like 103. And amongst uh, those bones, right, you have ribs. You have 12 on each side, both men and women. Well, there's that makes 24 bones. 24 bones by the same name, ribs. Then you have the bones of the fingers and the toes, right? And if you look at your fingers, I know you can't look at your toes, really, but if you look at your fingers and you look how many sections each finger is divided into, you will find that each finger is subdivided into three sections, except for the thumb, which has two. OK, so that makes it 14 bones. That makes it 28 bones because four uh, because it's uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, 14 on each side, which and uh, 14 on the other. It's 28. And in reality, we have the same thing on the feet, bones of the fingers and toes, they go by the same name and it's 56 bones, 56 bones by the same name. So, you know, there you have it. Almost all the bones in the human body are are here for you. Well, kind of, okay. And making things a little bit too easy. But, you know, if you think about it in these terms, we don't really have to learn a whole heck of a lot. So let's get started with the skeletal system. I always explain words, you know that, okay? I do that for specifically for a reason. One thing that you should never do when you are studying for anything, especially sterile processing examination, you must never make assumptions and you must never pass by a word that you don't know and just leave it at that. Always look things up, always ask. Okay, you can always ask me, you can always Google things. You can always look in the dictionary, but whatever you do, don't pass by the words that you don't know. Don't skip that word could hold the entire secret of an entire paragraph in it. So don't pass by. So the word skeletal system, we take it for granted. It's made up of two word parts. Skeleto and suffix al. Well, suffix al again is one of those suffixes that I use all the time, ik, ak, um, al, us, ar. These are the same suffixes that mean belonging to. So we can skip by. But skeleto, the word skeleto literally means a frame. So skeletal system is a system, <coughs> it's a system that, that is a frame, okay? Today, when you pass by a construction site and they're building stuff everywhere, you can see that they first build a frame, which they call the skeleton. Oh, 
Okay, so it's a skeleton, and then they build stuff on top of it. Okay, so that leads me to explain what the skeletal system is for. Skeletal system. Now, reasons for having it. Reasons, reasons for having it. Number one, it provides a rigid frame, just like the name suggests, skeletal frame. Two, it provides for movement. Another thing that the skeletal system does, it provides protection for the vital organs. Now, as I keep telling you, do not skip by any words that may or may not make sense, okay? And here's one of the words that I don't want you to skip by, okay? Vital. Who knows the meaning of the word vital? What does it mean, vital? Necessary. Necessary, okay, good. Anybody else? Important. Important, okay, very good. Very good. All right, well, let me explain it. The word vital is made up of two word parts, vita and suffix al. Well, there's a suffix al again, skeletal, okay? Uh, all those suffixes. Now, the question is, what is vita? Vita means life. So now, what is the definition of what is the definition of AL and Vita together? What is the meaning of the word vital? Come on. Combine the two. Give it to me. Necessary for life. Necessary for life or belonging to life. So AL, remember, AL means belonging or pertaining to. That's the definition of the suffix. So belonging to life. That's the definition of the word vital. Remember, folks, don't skip by the words. Don't assume. Don't assume anything. Now. Excuse me, Steve. Yes. Um, I'm here. So when I thank you, um, when I looked in the book, it said A L derm, like dermal, like the skin. It yeah. says pertaining to the skin. So is mm -hmm. A L only pertaining to the skin, or is that an example? Well, no. A L. Here are these suffixes: ik, ak, um, al, us, and ar. All of these suffixes together, and again, they all mean belonging to or pertaining to. Oh, okay. Derm means it's skin. Skin. Okay. So, derm and all means dermal means belonging or pertaining to the skin. Make sense? Yeah. And in this particular case, it's vita and all pertaining to or belonging to life. We sort of make it look like, or we read into it and we say necessary or essential for life. And as a matter of fact, the word vital now means very important. Okay, but why? Because it's necessary for life. Thank so, you. no, no problem, no problem. Provides a rigid frame, provides for movement because without the bones, you certainly couldn't be upright or, or take a step provides protection for the vital organs. Here's what else it does. It 
stores calcium. Because bones store calcium. Calcium is, a, is an essential mineral that you need for your body. OK, and we store it in the bones. When your diet is all wrong and you don't get enough calcium in the diet, the body begins to steal it from your bones. And when that happens, the bones become weak. OK, that's what happens. And here's last but not least. Here's the fifth thing that it does. I'm going to put number five over here. And I'm going to put an interesting word on the board. Go ahead and write it down. Now, what is that word? What do you recognize in this word? Well, we have two word parts here, hemato and poesis. So what is hemato? Related to blood. Very good. Hemato is one of these words that means blood. Now, poesis is an interesting word. It means creation. So bones make blood. They create blood. That's what bones do. These bones, our skeletal system, does all these five things. Make sense? Yes. OK, very good. Now. So the skeletal system. Is a system of bones and joints. Skeletal system is a. System of bones and joints. I'm going to draw a picture like that for joints. Medical term for bones is Osteo. Medical term for joints is arthro. Now, have you ever heard of medical term arthro? Well, I know you've seen this word. Now, who hasn't seen or heard of arthritis? Come on. Inflammation. Well, everybody's heard of arthritis. So now you know that the word arthritis is made up of arthro, which means joint, and suffix itis which you also already know means inflammation. So arthritis literally means inflammation of the joints.
Now, see how the language begins to develop? So, I, I sincerely hope you're drawing pictures. Here we have a bone. And here we have another bone. This is a bone. And this is a bone. And this is a joint. So the definition of joint is a place where two or more bones connect and interact with one another. And once again, reminding you that the medical term for bone is osteo, and the medical term for joint is arthro. Okay, now, quick question. Has anyone in this room never had chicken? Has everyone had chicken? Fried chicken, baked chicken, chicken from the soup. You've all had chicken, right? Is that a yes? Can I get a something? Yes. Okay, good. Everyone had chicken. You know, there could What's be chicken? some chicken. What's chicken? Oh, come on. So chicken. You know, the thing that clucks, lays eggs and uh, makes delicious chicken soup and delicious fried chicken. We I don't mean, have I, that in America. Well, we, we may not have it soon, but we still have it. In any case, um, chicken. So if I were to tell you that my favorite part of chicken is the bone. I mean, in my house, it's, uh, uh, it's a given. When there is chicken, everybody eats chicken, and I get everybody's bones because that's what I like to chew on. Okay, I, I love the bones. Okay, especially the end of the bone. I love to eat the end of the bone. Anyone with me on this? Now, the end of the chicken bone has that shiny, slick end to it. What do we call it? Gristle? Yeah? Do people call it that? What do you call that crunchy stuff on the end of the bone? It's shiny. It's like it's, it's here on Probably. each end of the bone. Cartilage? I, I, I mean, really? Yeah, of course it's called cartilage. I know it's called cartilage, all right? But what do you call it when you eat chicken? Can I have me some cartilage? No, nah, nobody says that. I mean, give me the end of the bone. What's on the end of the bone? Right? What's on the end of the bone? Gristle, whatever the case is, that shiny, delicious stuff, crunchy. I love it. OK, you guys can have the chicken breast. Give me the ends of the bone. I'll, I'll, I'll chew on that like a dog. OK, that's what I'll do. OK, so. What is that? And just like some of you smarty pants out there already called it cartilage, that's exactly what it is. So on the end of the bone. Call it white. Shiny. I don't want to say crunchy. Eh coating on the ends of the bones is cartilage. Medical term for cartilage is chondro, chondro. Now, you know that sometimes 
these bones just don't come apart and you just have to either rip them or cut them so you can get at that uh, uh, bone end, right? So these bones are interconnected. There are tight, very, uh, how should I say, um, tough, uh, what they call connective tissue, stuff that connects one bone to the other, all right? They are called ligaments, ligaments. So we connect bone to bone. So I'll do it like that. And this stuff is called a ligament. In Latin, the word ligamento or ligatura, it, it, it actually appears in English language as a ligature. OK, there is such a word called ligature. It comes straight from Latin, which literally means a binding. OK, something that binds one with another. Am I making sense? Yes. Yes. Good. All right. What else we got there? We got that. We got. Oh yes, of course. How could I forget? How do bones move? They don't move on their own. A bone, which we said provides for movement, doesn't move on its own. It has to be moved. Bones are moved by muscles. So over here, I'm going to make a little bulge, and we're going to call it a muscle. Muscles move bones for the most part, for the most part. Some muscles don't do that. OK, some muscles move food uh, down the, uh, uh, the the system of uh, pipes in the digestive system. OK, some muscles live inside uh, your blood vessels. Heart is a muscle. OK, there's all sorts of different types of muscles, but in this particular case, muscles move bones. As a reminder, I know we had this before, medical term for muscle is myo. And we can connect a bone to a muscle using another type of connective tissue. Muscles connect to bones using tendons. So we have we have um, connective tissue that connects muscles to bones and they're called tendons. And we have ligaments, another type of connective tissue that connects bones to bones. Okay? So tendons, medical term for tendons, medical term for um, ligaments, they're all the same. Tendo, ligamento, blah, blah, blah. Makes no difference. There is there is no way. Muscles are muscles, okay? Muscles expand and muscles contract. When this muscle would pull back, it'll pull this bone to come up, right? That we're doing. I'm flexing my muscle, and as I flex my muscle, I pull my arm up. That's what happens. That's exactly how it works. And this is how bones get into movement. Making sense? Yes. Excellent. Moving right along. Now it's time to learn about the skeleton. All right, so 
This is what we start with. And folks, this is what we have here. Up on top, we have the skull and face. Over here, we have the spine. Now, if you look at the picture that I provided for you over here, here, the spine is subdivided in a whole bunch of little sections. Well, each one of these sections is a bone. The spine is made up of small bones known as vertebrae. And I'd like to draw your attention to the end of the uh, word vertebrae, suffix AE. Suffix AE literally means plural. Now, the spine is broken down into sections. Neck section, chest section, and lower back section. And this over here I call the butt section. It's not a real term, I made it up, but that's what makes your butt. That's why I call it the butt section. Now, next section is made up of seven vertebrae. The chest section is made up of 12 vertebrae. Lower back section is made up of five vertebrae. The butt section is made up of two pieces over here. One is called the sacrum and coccyx, which is known as the tail bone. Go ahead and uh, make sure you have this down. Sacrum is an interesting word. I don't really know exactly uh, why it's known that. Um, the bone, the name of this bone, sacrum, originates from uh, ancient Greek, um, where it was known as the hero's bone. That's what it's known in Greek. And then when the Roman Empire sacked Greece and they stole all their medical records and stuff like that, all their teaching books from Greeks, they renamed it as sacrum or sacro, which is part of the word sacred or holy, like hero kind of related to that. It's, it's known in, in Latin as the uh, sacred bone. Why? I don't know. Did they worship butts? Maybe. I, I don't know. But that's where it comes from. Um, so, um, the word coccyx literally means tail. So, um, also in Latin. Uh, 
Now, over here, from the chest section of the vertebrae, vertebrae in the chest section grow ribs. There are 12 sections, 12 vertebrae in the chest section, which means there are 12 ribs, both for men and for women. We have the same number of ribs. Okay, now. And so, what do we have? What do we have? We have seven vertebrae in the neck. Oh, by the way, they're called, um, what do you call it, cervical. Vertebrae or cervical spine. In medicine, they call it simply C-spine. Chest section is known as the thoracic vertebrae or thoracic spine, vertebrae or thoracic spine. And lower back is known as the lumbar spine or lumbar vertebrae. So you got seven, 12, and five. That makes it 24. So there are 24 bones in the human body, 24 bones of the spine known as the vertebrae. And you got 24 ribs, right? You got 24 ribs. Together, you got 24 vertebrae and 24 ribs. That's 48 bones. That's 25% of all the bones we have to learn. And we have only two words to remember them by vertebrae. 24 ribs also 24 now ribs come together in the chest in this area where we have a breastbone so plus one breast bone plus one sacrum plus one coccyx okay so we're well on our way to learning all of the bones in the human body. That, my dear friends, is the start. What's left? Why, it's arms and legs. That's all. That's all. That's all. Let me erase this. So to this pillar, we have to add arms and legs. And I'm going to leave the bones of the skull and the face for later. But suffice it to say, we have six bones of the skull and 11 bones of the face. Six bones of the skull and 11 bones of the face. I'll give those bones to you, even though they're somewhat unimportant, but I'll do it in the end. Okay. Is that fair? Now, let's deal with. Oh, by the way, this section that I just drew for you, I, I and I'm going to sort of. Um, I'm going to backtrack a little bit just so you can see, right? We started off with a skull, then we went down to, you know, this picture right over here, and then we had the ribs, okay? This thing right over here, this is known as the axial skeleton, 
axial skeleton. Now, what the heck is axial? Well, it's made up of two words, axis and suffix al. I hope I don't have to translate suffix al again because we already did it several times. And what is an axis? Well, we have a planet Earth, that's the globe. We have the North Pole and we have the South Pole, right? That's our globe. And we have the axis around which the world turns. So axis is a pole around which everything revolves. That's why it's called an axial skeleton or skeleton that provides this pole, main pole for the entire body on which everything else hangs. Now, what hangs off of this pole? Arms and legs. That's what we have. Arms and legs. Now, all of your vital organs belong to your axial skeleton. So your heart, your lungs are right underneath your ribs. Your digestive system is hanging on over here. So everything is on this axis. Arms and legs are extra. Okay? So technically, you could live without your arms and legs. It wouldn't be too much fun, but you could do it. All right? As long as you keep your trunk, you're okay. All right? Now, arms and legs. Arms and legs. Is it one G or two G's? I told you, I'm beginning to forget all sorts of simple words. Is it two G's? No, one G. I've lost my mind. I'm telling you, maybe it's, it's Friday. So arms and legs. They're also called. Upper and lower extremities, or we also call them appendages. Upper and lower extremities. or appendages. Appendages simply means, like the word appendix, which we had previous class, right? Means something extra. And that is why this, the center, the trunk, was called axial skeleton or the axis. And this type of skeleton is called appendicular skeleton, which is why I use the word appendages, because we're gonna be working on what we call appendicular appendicular skeleton which literally means arms legs which is the same thing as upper and lower extremities or appendages and it's the appendicular skeleton Why do they call them extremities? And sometimes, by the way, they also call them limbs. What is the word extremities? What kind of word does it come from that you know in English language? Come on, what word do you see in the word extremities? Come on. Come on, somebody say something. Let me know you guys are alive and thinking. Extreme. Yeah, extreme. 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 So what does it mean, extreme? I mean, today you got extreme everything. Extreme sports, extreme sales, extravaganza, blah, blah, blah. So what is extreme? What do you see in the word extreme? What do you see a prefix in there that you know? The X. Which out. means out on the outside, somewhere far away. 
Extreme means not in the middle, but far away. That's what these extremities means. We're away from the uh, uh, we're away from the middle. You know, and now that we're talking about it, let me throw in a couple of prefixes. Since we're learning medical terminology, after all, this is part of medical terminology. Couple of prefixes. Prefix ab and prefix ad. What do they mean? I don't even have to give you a definition. I'll just draw two pictures. Plus or minus. Or you can say to. Or you can say. From. You can say. Bring. Close or take away. Abduction, adduction. Normal, abnormal. Okay. When you see ab or ad in the beginning of the word, it begins to formulate. You can begin to formulate. A, um, you know, an opinion about the word. You may not know the rest, but you certainly can understand it with just the knowledge of some of this, uh, you know, uh, some of these uh, prefixes and suffixes. One is a positive, one is a negative. Now, let's talk about the upper extremities. I would like you to do a little bit of an exercise for me. Here's what I want you to do. I would like you to move your shoulder back and forth. Back and forth. And I want you to feel everything that's moving in there. What do you feel? Feel around. It's all yours. Come on. What are you feeling? Feel around. Look where the movement is. You got movement in the front. You got movement over here and even in the back. In the back, you can feel stuff. Come on, feel around with me. Feel, feel what's moving over here. Move your shoulder. Look at how much, how much action you can get out of the shoulder. Look how much you can do. Look how amazing this joint is where these bones come together and interact. Interesting. You can feel movement when you move your shoulder over here, right? Your collarbone is moving. You can feel some crazy bone in the back moving, but you know what it is. It's a shoulder blade. Everybody knows that. And your upper arm, that's also moving. So check this out. Right? We have part of your chest, okay, which connects to the breastbone. Okay, whatever. Sorry, I, I, I didn't draw the um, uh, ribs properly, okay? And up on top, you have a odd bone over here, which we call the color bone. Then in the back, you have a bone kind of looks like this. It's a very strange looking bone in the back, okay? Known as the shoulder blade. And then connected to it, you have a bone of the upper arm. So these three bones, 
are going in to make a shoulder joint. Shoulder joint, right over here. This area, we'll put an X on there. Shoulder joint. Remember, medical term for joint is arthro. Arthro means joint, which is a place where two or more bones come together and interact, right? Now, that was our definition of a joint, right? Joint, medical term arthro, where two plus bones come together and interact. I would like to replace the word interact with a new word, and this word is articulate. Articulate. In this particular term, it's a verb. It's a verb. We also know the word articulate, okay, which is an adjective. Okay, but this is a verb which literally means interact or rub against each other, articulate, okay? That's articulation, moving against one another. So interact and articulate, articulate. It's a verb, okay? It's a verb. Not that says that Steve is so articulate, right? No, it's the same spelling, different word. Articulate in this particular case is a verb which dis which defines the movement or interaction of bones with one another in a joint. Are we together? Are we together? Yes, no, maybe. Yes, no, maybe. Come on now. We are. We are. All right. Every so often, I just need you know a, a gurgle, some kind of a sound that you would make to make me think that you're alive. All right, don't keep your mic on all the time so I, I know what's going on in your kitchen where you may be taking the sterile processing class, okay? <laughs> Which is, by the way, a great place to study uh, in the kitchen or in the bathroom because a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff in there will remind you of sterile processing. And of course, especially in the bathroom, as I keep telling people, take me to the bathroom with you. is a great place for you to find some peace where people will not disturb you and you can sit there and listen to my lectures. You can sit there and listen to me read the book to you. OK, and it's a great place to uh, to study. I believe I graduated college out of my bathroom. Maybe too much information, but it's true. And so. This is the shoulder joint, three bones. Now, guess what happens here? The upper arm goes down. It's the same bone, and it goes to our next joint, which is the elbow joint. And it's right here. Here is our elbow joint, where we have this, oh my gosh, how could I be so stupid? I forgot to give you the names of the collarbone. The collarbone is known as the clavicle, all right, the upper no, uh, arm is known as the humerus. And the shoulder blade is known as the scapula. How could I? Shoulder blade or scapula. Count scapula. Uh, uh, uh. That's why we call the upper arm bone the funny bone. OK, for those of you who played the operations game. Right, it's called uh, the funny bone. Of course, we know that the word humorous, which means funny, is spelled H-U-M-E-R-O-U-S, but they call it the funny bone anyway. Now, the upper, the lower arm or the forearm is made up of two bones. One is called the radius. 
and one is called the ulna. Okay, so radius and ulna and part of humerus form the elbow joint. Now comes the next joint, which is the wrist. And the wrist is made up of eight bones right here. They are very odd shaped, small bones. OK, they are the bones of the wrist. There are eight of them. OK, and they're called. Carpals. They're called carpals. Now, I know. I know you've heard of carpals. Okay, you may not have tied two and two together, but I'm sure I am sure you've heard of the carpal tunnel. You may even had carpal tunnel. I don't know. Okay. Who's heard of carpal tunnel? I have. What have you heard about it? Um it's probably as a result of using a keyboard too much or using your fingers too much. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I've heard from the people who had it. OK, so, you know, it all started out with uh, secretaries because they would use the keyboard on the typewriter many years ago, and the first computer keyboards were not very ergonomic. OK, and they would, would hold their hands like this and this position caused these bones to deteriorate and for the nerves that go to your fingers to get stuck inside of a tunnel inside one of these carpal bones. By the way, the word carpal uh, literally means wrist in Greek. Carpus, okay, that's literally means wrist. So there's eight of these bones. Each one has a name, but we don't care. I'm not going to teach it to you. That's unimportant. But I want to tell you that there are specialist surgeons who specialize nothing uh, in nothing except surgeries of hand and wrist. That's all they operate on. They don't know anything else. If you ask this man or a woman, a surgeon who specializes in wrist and God forbid something happens, he's the only surgeon left in the hospital and you need an emergency appendectomy uh, they wouldn't even know where to find it okay everything has become so specialized there are also doctors who specialize in uh, in feet and uh, and ankles okay so there's everything is like a subspecialty some people specialize only in shoulder surgery okay so this is what it is that's how it is today and guess what you don't have such a luxury you're going to specialize in surgical instruments for every surgery. Now imagine how absolutely fantastic that is. I just want you to think this through as to how complex and how interesting sterile processing actually is. And as I encourage all of my students, as soon as you get into the hospital, as soon as you get into the hospital, Find a way to go see surgery. They will let you. It's not a problem. You'll be right there looking at what they're doing and maybe dying of embarrassment because they opened up a kit of yours and your scissors don't cut right. Or you could be your chest could be swelling with pride because your name is synonymous with high quality. And when a surgeon sees your name on that box, they know that everything inside that surgical kit that was prepared by you, not only is it all there, but it's also working right. And when you see the fruits of your labor, it'll make you a much better sterile processing technician. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, if you ever want to, and I encourage you to do so, if you ever want to take extra certifications, OK, one of them is called CIS, Certified Instrument Specialist. OK, um, I can tell you right now, I hold all of these certifications um, in sterile processing. And I want to tell you, first of all, every certification 
means at least an extra dollar for you per hour in your paycheck. But more importantly, when you take that certification and you are a certified instrument specialist, it opens up all the doors to you. It just does. It opens more doors. You don't always have to work in a hospital. You can work for companies that manufacture and service sur surgical uh, uh, instruments. You know, there's, there's, there's work out there for you. You can be in sales if you want to. Hmm? You, you can be in charge of loaner instrumentations. We'll talk about that. Okay, so there are eight bones of the wrist, carpals, all by the same name. And then begin the bones of the hand. There are five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Bones of the hand. They go by the same name and they're called metacarpals. There are five of them. And then, and you can see them all. Go ahead and make a fist and count how many knuckles you have. One, two, three, four, five. You can count them. They're all yours. They go from your wrist and they form the palm of your hand. You can see them all. They're yours. So check them out. Touch it, feel it. Okay, especially you go in the shower, you you know, when there's a little soap on you, you can feel everything on your body or maybe someone else's body. Depends who you like to take showers with. <laughs> That's not up to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and so there are five bones which make up the hand. They're called metacarpals. OK, so just keep that in mind. And then here comes our gift from God. And these are the bones of the fingers. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And these bones of the fingers. Fingers, they are known as phalanges, phalanges. There are 14 of them. Phalanges. They're odd names. As I tell you, people who create names in anatomy, uh, they have funny understanding of the world. Sometimes it's history. Uh, sometimes it's something else. Sometimes it's, you know, uh, forks and spoons. It, you know, we have parts of the body uh, which are named after a fork. As a matter of fact, you know, uh, I usually like to bring it up. Uh, there is a spot in female um, uh, uh, in female anatomy known as a fourchette. Does anyone speak French here in this group? Anyone? Yes. What is a fourchette? Fork. Fork. Very good. Yeah, so believe it or not, a part of woman's vagina is known as a fourchette. Because to some guy, I assume it's a guy, uh, because women didn't really participate in, in a lot of the early anatomical studies. For them, it looked like a like a dessert fork. OK, <laughs> so uh, that's what they call that a, a foreshadow. So I'm telling you, uh, anatomy is is a very unique thing. Whoever finds it first, you know, has the dips. Ooh, 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 I'm going to call it a phalange. Yeah, that's it. Because it looks like a Greek or a Roman phalanx, you know, in, in, in the military structures, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, I, I give up sometimes. But it makes life very interesting. If you really want to follow up on some of these linguistic terms, it makes it very exciting. 
All right. So that, my dear friends, is the upper extremities. We just calculated all the bones. OK, so what did we count? We said. Shoulder. Was three bones. We had elbow. We're only going to count two. OK, because one of the bones that make up the shoulder also makes up the elbow. We got the. Wrist eight. We had the hand five and fingers 14. Now, guess what? It's times two. Okay, so this is six. This is four. This is 16. This is 10. All right, and this is 28. Why? Because what's on one side is on the other. Okay. See how easy that is? And this is this is this is how we're learning. Um, what do you call it? Uh, human anatomy and terminology. Now, how is this terminology? Well, because and why is this helpful, folks? Believe me when I tell you. Eh, let me uh, give you a name of the instrument. And I have a question for you. What does this saw cut? And how do you know? Anyone want to answer this question? Uh, sternum means belonging to the sternum. Very good. So what does it cut? The sternum. Very good, which is the breastbone. Right? And there you have it. We uh, the examples of of this is uh, uh, are are uh, all over the place. You'll be dealing with these uh, these instruments called after bones or certain bony structures. And you will know what to find and you will know where to find it. You will know where to put it. Now let's do the lower extremity. Now the lower extremity begins a little bit higher. It begins with your hip joint. So we have the bottom end of the spine together with the sacred bone and the tailbone, and then We have something called the pelvis. Now, pelvis, it's that bottom half where your hips are, okay? And it looks a little bit like this butterfly right over here. And, you know, you can find pictures of the pelvis all over the place, even in a the book. They don't pay too much attention to it, okay? Now, but the pelvis kind of looks like this. Now, why is it here? Because this is an important bone, okay? Pelvis forms your hip. Pelvis forms your hips. Because into this bone right over here comes in a bone that actually makes a hip itself. This is the thigh bone. All right, so thigh bone goes inside of the pelvis 
and it makes up your hip joint. Hip joint. Thigh bone has an official name as the femur. And of course, the same thing happens on, on both sides. Then you have the knee joint. Remember how we had the elbow joint before? It's very similar. So this would be the knee joint. We have one more bone here, which is kind of special. Goes here. And this bone is the knee cap, also known as the patella. These two bones that form the lower leg. All right. These two bones that form the lower leg are known as the tibia and fibula. Tib, fib for short. It doesn't matter which one, just the tibia and fibula. I actually just should have put them all on one side, tibia and fibula. And now comes the ankle and the foot down below. So I'm going to put it up because I miscalculated the amount of space I have. So we have the ankle and foot. May I erase this? You guys got this? Okay, I'll take that as a yes. Yes. Good, good, thank you. So we have that lower leg, a couple of bones coming in, and then believe it or not, we have Just like we had in the wrist, we have eight weird bones known as tarsals. And tarsal literally means ankle, tarsals. There are eight tarsals, but one of these tarsals I will actually give you a name for. This bone you actually know, known as the heel bone and the a name for the heel bone is calcaneus, calcaneus. So calcaneus is a tarsal bone and there's eight of them, but I give you the extra name because, well, it exists and you'll see it. Then come the bones that make your foot and just like the hand, there's five of them and they're called meta tarsals. There are five of them. And guess what comes next? Your toes. And just like in hands, same number of phalanges, except for the big toe, where there's two, the rest are three in each toe. So, toes have phalanges, and there are 14 of them in every foot. Now, 
foot has another surprise. If you look at the foot from the bottom up, uh, If you look at the foot from the bottom, right over here, there's something called the ball of the foot. And it's important because it has a couple of small bones. Small bones. And these small bones are called sesamoid bones. Sesamoid bones. Look at the word sesamoid. What do you see in sesamoid? OID. OID. Who said that? I didn't see who said that. Who said it? Me. Me. Ah, Stacy. All right. OID, which means what? Suffix OID means what? I'm looking through my notes right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll help you. It means looks like. It means looks like. Now, remember, I told you, you know, these names are weird. Sesamoid literally means looks like sesame. These two little bones looks like sesame seeds. To some person who sliced up a human body into little bitty pieces. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at these little bones over there. They look like sesame seeds. I'm going to call them sesamoid bones because they look like sesame. Okay. So that's what we have. For all of you people who wear high heels, you felt the pain in these bones. Now, I don't know. I only hear it from people who wear heels. I never wear heels. Um, then again, you never know. <laughs> now, so if you can relate to this, you can be silent and just nod in agreement, or you can say, yeah, I felt those bones. And now you know which bones were actually in pain. OK, you got to be very careful about these bones. You can actually break them. And uh, the healing process is painful and long because there's no way not to step on it. So you re really have to take the healing pretty seriously. OK, my dear friends, that was the lower extremities. Let's count up what we had. We had, by the way, pelvis is made up of two halves. Pelvis is made up of two halves. So we count it as two. So pelvis, well, let's just call it the, uh, well, let's just go two. Let's say femur, I'll just instantly go with two. Patella, two. Lower leg, which is tibia and fibula, will go with four. Let's say tarsals and calcaneus. Eight. Metatarsals. Uh, oh, it shouldn't be eight, it should be 16. 16. And this should be 10, right? And Phalanges, uh, 28, plus sesamoids, 4. All right, let's break out the calculator. I'm going to break out my calculator, and let's count. All right, Oop. not calendar, calculator, shall we? A, B, C, there we go. Calcul uh, again, I open the darn calendar. What the heck is wrong with me today? So we go four. I'm going to start at the bottom. Four. Four. Plus. Twenty eight. Plus ten. Plus sixteen. Plus four. Plus two, plus two, plus two, 
Okay. Let's go to fingers. Plus 28. Plus 10. Plus 16. Plus 4. Plus 6. We're now at 11 bones of the face. Plus 11. Plus 6. Plus 1. Plus 1. Plus 1. Plus 24. And plus 24 equals. Oh, I'm short. I, I'm at 200. I'm at 200. I'm missing six. But I'm not short. I got it right. In every ear, we have three bones each. Inside our ears, we have special bones that part of the skeletal system that add up to 206. Folks, you just learned 206 bones. And how many names did you have to remember? Let's look. One, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm not going to count fingers. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We didn't do the uh, whatever, face and, and uh, skull yet. One coccyx, 16, sacrum, 17, breast, 18, and 19, 20. So to memorize 206 bones, we just needed to remember 20 bones. Really? Is that so hard to do? Is that so difficult? I think you can do it. Now, let me, uh, I mean, it wasn't hard, was it? I think it was pretty fun. Now, again, I just want to pause and tell you that almost none of this that we covered when we talked about medical terminology, will be on the exam. Almost nothing. So in the grand scheme of things, we were just having fun and learning to take notes. That's what we've been doing and preparing for the future so we can be better prepared to make more money as high professionals that you are, okay? That you will be shortly. But you are those people already. Just get that title next to your name, CRCST. And the, the world opens up to you right there, okay? When you have that title next to your name, it comes with extra responsibility and prestige. But as far as the exam is concerned, please do not waste your time learning everything here today. Just don't. Save it for later. It'll come back to you, okay? Open it up once you pass the board exam. Skull. Skull has six bones. Okay. We have a frontal bone, one bone. We have the temporal bone. There's two of them. We have parietal. There are two of them. And we have uh, occipital. One. Altogether, six. These are the names of the bones of the skull. Now we have 11 bones of the face. Teeth don't count. Okay, let's pretend that this is our face. Let's start off with the bones of the nose. Nasal bones. There are two of them, two halves, nasal bones, two. We have the lower jaw, known as the 
mandible. There is one of them. There is the upper jaw. Known as maxilla. Now look at the word maxilla. What do you see that you recognize right away in the word maxilla? What do you see in the word maxilla that I talked about today? E. Mm hmm. Which means what? A E means plural. That's why there's two bones that make up the uh, upper jaw. They're also called maxilla, but they go together. There's two bones. Now, over here in this area, the area that I call the mid face, mid face, there are two bones. One is called the golly. Ethmoid and sphenoid. Okay, these are the bones that make up the mid face and your sinuses. When the winter comes and you're all stuffed up over here, that's where in these areas, because there's a lot of empty spaces over there. And folks, if you have any interest at all, Google. The ethmoid, as a matter of fact, let me do that for you and I'll show it to you in just give me one second. All right. Let me uh let me show you show you what the stuff looks like. It'll give you some appreciation. Ethmoid bone images. Just want to show you. I just want to show you what the ethmoid looks like. All right. You see the sucker right over here? See it? You see this guy? Yeah. That's the ethmoid bone. And you know who needs to know every crevice of this bone, uh, every crevice of this bone? The ear, nose, and throat doctors. They must know every part of this bone because they have to climb in there and they have to know where they are. Holy moly. That's all I can tell you is holy moly because, because it is extremely complex. This bone is extremely difficult to see. Okay. And you know, let me show you if this is ethmoid. OK. Here comes the sphenoid. OK. These guys and gals need to know every part of this bone. Every part and I, let me tell you something. And they have to be able to figure out where they are once they're inside your skull. Once they're looking, everything is upside down and backwards. This is no joke. Yeah, this is this is this is no joke. About about what the what the stuff actually is. OK, so I just wanted to show you. I call it the mid face uh, because because it is the mid face. All right, it's somewhere in the middle of your skull, in the middle of your face. And, you know, it's just an extraordinary thing. And there's a couple of more bones over here. OK, this is where the tears come out and these bones are called. Lacrimal. Bones or bones of the T's uh, tears because in Latin and in Spanish. I don't know what it's like in French. These bones actually means are called after tears. They're right here. And that's all I wanted to, you know, throw in here. This is more than enough for today. OK, folks, again, no homework just for you to watch this stuff next week. Next week, we begin with the essential knowledge 
of sterile processing. Okay, we learn about the department and we learn about the microbiology. We call it preventing the spread of disease. Yes, so first we will learn about what causes disease and then we're going to learn about how to prevent uh, them from spreading disease. Okay, you're going to be in the front in the front lines of the battle against spreading disease. Let me tell you that third leading cause of death in the hospital are diseases that people catch in the hospital. Not the diseases they came with, but the diseases that they got while in the hospital. All right? So, you guys are going to be in the front lines of stopping that. Okay, it's no small task. It's no small matter. And uh, when you are done and and you are uh, done with all the, your qualifications and certifications in sterile processing, and you want to know, hey, where do I go from here? Hey, Steve, can you suggest something? Come back and see me, and I'll tell you what other certification you can get. Um, and uh, I'll steer you in the right direction. Any questions about what we covered today? Anyone, anyone, anyone? No. Anyone? Okay. All right. So have some fun. Watch these videos and just put them aside. OK, um, you can listen to my readings of the chapter there. They're, they're in the general section under recordings. So chapters one, two, and I didn't read the chapter about the anatomy because it's all pictures, so there's nothing to read there. So you can just listen to me read these chapters and review these videos uh, from class. On uh, uh, next week, next class uh, starts the stuff for which you're responsible to take quizzes and generate grades and actually submit your work and so on and so forth. So that's when it gets real. But you know what else it means? That means about three weeks from now, you should feel rather comfortable applying for employment in hospitals and getting a job in sterile processing. Why? Because I will teach you just about everything you need to know to understand what goes on in the department, and you will be able to go through an interview. And most of you, except for people who just started, have a resume that I edited for you, which you can use. Now, folks who just started, feel free to send me your resumes too, and I will edit them together with you to make it look like a professional resume for sterile processing, which you can use to apply for jobs in sterile processing before you finish the class. All right, we'll talk about it some more, no worries. Um, okay, I'm done, let me kill the recording. Uh, stop the recording. <laughs>